Hi, um, thanks for buying my DVD politics. Uh, as a little extra, um, I thought you could meet a friend of mine. I talk about him in the show, Carl Pilkington. Um, I thought it would be nice for you to get to know him a little bit better. So please meet Carl Pilkington. Alright. Alright? Yeah. Good, yeah. Look at his little roundy, baldy, monkey head. Are you getting that, yeah? <laughs> right. Carl, a lot of subjects we touch on um, in the, in the stand-up and in politics in general. Yeah. Things like race, disability, sexuality, law and order, <coughs> crime and punishment. And I want to go through those uh, with you and uh, find out your views on those subjects and thereby the general public getting to know you better. Uh, so let's go for it, shall we? Okay, start off with uh, race, a big political issue, race. What do you think about race? Just, we're well, just all the same, aren't we, at the end of the day? Good. Yeah. Mm. I mean, some of us age better than others. <coughs> yeah? What do you mean? Uh, Chinese. <laughs> well, what do you uh, mean? They just... They age better than us. No, they, they age worse than us. What's that based on? Just when you see them. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know how old they are. No, but you never see a sort of a 35-year-old one. <laughs> what does that mean? You, you what does that 30, mean? What do you mean you don't see a 35-year-old one? Right, we're in London, yeah. Yeah. It's a Chinatown. Yeah. So, I walk through there a lot. Right. And they just always look old. <laughs> yeah, but they might be old. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, but what is you... What is you... <laughs> you can't say that, can no, you? see some that are about... Th probably about 30, right? And, and I'm not having a go, but... Normally, when they're about 20, they're good looking. Right. You think they're alright? Yeah. See when he's 30, forget it. They just age overnight, it's like a pair. <laughs> what do you mean, no? Just, it just what is your answer to this? Chinese people age very. That some of the oldest people, I think the oldest man in the world is Chinese, at 120. Yeah, he, hundred... says, he says he's 120. It's probably about 40. <laughs> I'm telling you, fact. I mean, I'm not, like I say, I'm not having a go. I like them. Give themselves themselves and that they're all right, but so that's right. race. That's done. So that's brilliant. That's it. We've covered race. We talk about disability in the show. What are your views on the disabled? What dis what sort of disabilities? Well, what sort are they? Well, as soon as you mentioned disabilities, I'm thinking elephant man rather than just in a wheelchair. <laughs> okay. Because they get looked after, they get ramps and that, don't they? They're all right. <laughs> they're loving it. They love, they love those ramps, don't they? No, but they yeah, can't I mean, get enough of those ramps. In and out of libraries, like nobody's business. There's, there's different. I mean, you know that I'm into freaks and that. No, again, I'm not. You know, it seems like I'm just, just having a go all the time. No, but not. they fascinate me. Like, what do you mean? What is a freak to you then? Something that you look at and you go, you know, you do a double take. <laughs> Steve Merchant. Uh, just, just, just odd <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right, okay. Like what though? When was it when they used to have sideshows and that and they'd, and they'd take them out like the pinheads and all that? <laughs> Nothing's changed, has it? You know what I mean? People still like to see a two-headed kid or whatever. <laughs> Who likes to see a two-headed <laughs> That's what you mean, isn't it? You like to see a two-headed kid. There's no such thing. You don't know what? <laughs> no, there's not a two-headed kid. He's <laughs> got that book! Is it true you carry this book round with you? This is a book, right, of the 50 sort of weirdest things in the world. <laughs> 50 weirdest things? It's a rundown, right? It's a rundown, it's a little chart. Yeah. Right? At number 50, don't know if you can get this, two headed fella. That's at number 50. So what's at number one? It's not two heads. Oh, it's two heads. It's not two heads. Can you see that? What? Yeah. What do you mean it's not two heads? Well, it's not. It's not. I mean, it's it's weird. I'll give you. It's. I mean, that's not a that's not a normal look. I will give you that. I mean, I don't think it could be sorted out with the salon. But it's not strictly two heads, is it? But I know if you like it, that's good. Then. So that, right. Well, that's not, that's not like number fifty and that. There's loads of loads of stuff in. Just do you want to run through some of your favourite freaks with me? Uh, just got to watch it. It's getting a bit worn out. Some of my favourites, yeah. Right. Just normal, normal lad, yeah. yeah. Looks normal there. Eh? Just a nice little head, nice little haircut, and that nice top, right? 
Yeah. 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 Three legs. Three legged fella. He's quite happy with it. The annoying thing is, right? Yeah. Three legs. Yeah. You know what his job was? Yeah. Three legged juggler. <laughs> What's the point of that? What do you mean the point of it? Well, he was his careers advisor there. <laughs> what should he have done? Well, he's got three legs, isn't it? So, any footballer, whatever. <laughs> jogger. <laughs> A jogger. You know what I mean? Oh, God. So, you got that in there. He's at number 23. Oh, God. There's loads of odd diseases. I mean, you were talking about, like, disabilities and that. Sometimes it's not a disability. Sometimes just people have got weird stuff. There's, there's one here, right? Again, just normal family, family photo going on, yeah? Everyone's sort of stood around, stood around the piano with the little mate <laughs> who's got that, that aging disease. And it's not, it's not funny, is it? But look at him. Sat around the piano, singing happy birthday for the eighth time that day. <laughs> right? Just <laughs> weird, weird stuff like that. It's weird, isn't it? Oh, it fascinates me. It's not having a go. It's just, just odd, odd stuff. I like odd stuff. So, is that class as disabilities? Well, I'd have thought so. That's what I think of them, then. I mean, what other famous sort of freaks are they? See, I don't think they even like being called freaks. I think if you're born with an extra leg, and the uh, and the midwife says, "Well done, Mr. and Mrs. Chalmers. Uh, you've given birth to a nine-pound freak." I think you know what I mean. The freak isn't a term that I think they use. Well, how do they break it to them? I mean, do they do do, do they sort of s just slip it in so they go right? We've got one leg out, and there's the other two. <laughs> just, just slip it in that way. <laughs> I don't know how do they do it? It's like the elephant man. Yeah. You know, he's, that's my favourite film, you know that. Why is it your favourite film, though? Just it's, it's, it's a brilliant film, it's, it's sad, it just makes you think, oh, you know, God, I haven't got a big head. Yeah. Um, you must wake up every day and you're thankful you've got a normal shaped head. So you say that, but it's round. Perfectly spherical. What, what shape should heads be? Well, they're not perfectly spherical, is it? There's not, most people don't look like a tennis ball. So where were we? Elephant Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's my favourite film. See, you know that wasn't his real name? You know his name was John Merrick? But the doctors did use the Elephant Man as a name, so they knew what his problem was before he turned up, otherwise you're wasting time looking at filing systems. When they say John Merrick's coming in at three and the doctor's like, oh, what's his problem? Wasting time, they go, Elephant Man's in, they go, right, get some more bums in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Fact. Sexuality. What do you think of uh, gay and lesbian issues? Each to their own. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I had one working for me. Right. One. Okay. You had one, yeah? Good. Gay fella. Yeah. Do you have a name or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's like our doctor said, elephant man's in. I'd sort of say, it's gay fella in the go yet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just quicker. The problem with him was, right, he's, he's gay stuff that he got to, whatever, you know, each to their own and that. Like what? What sort of gay stuff well, have you got to? what they do, they do stuff, don't they? But, but this, this lad, he saw his come in late, because he'd stay out late. And that's what they all do. They're always tired. That's what they do. So, okay. gays, you know, the, the gays are alright. Gays are alright, are they? Good. How important do you think education is? I haven't got that much. I'm all right, aren't I? I mean, any form of education. I don't just mean that you can learn things. I you mean, can you know too much, though, can't you? And then you worry about stuff. What sort of thing? What do you mean? Just stuff, like if you watch the news, you start going, oh, it's a war on and that. Don't watch it. It's like, no worries, do you know what I mean? you got Einstein. Yeah. He knew loads. Look at the state of him. <laughs> what do you mean, look at the state oh, of him? He, 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 he looks a bit of a mess, doesn't he? Right. Whereas, I don't know, look at a caveman or whatever, with no worries. Fairly healthy looking, good hair. You know what I mean? They're not bald, they're not stressed out. Because you've lost a lot of hair, do you think that's from all this knowledge that's shooting around in your head? Yeah, probably, I do, yeah, probably. 
could do without you know some of the knowledge you've got on that. I think we need some evidence though. I think we want to know some of the knowledge you've got. Like what? What do you want to know? But I, I remember talking to you about the nature of infinity once, and uh, there's a lovely model that shows the nature of infinity, where they say um, an infinite amount of chimps, an infinite amount of typewriters, will um, type the complete works of Shakespeare. And you couldn't grasp that. You couldn't. Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. I think you know it wouldn't happen, but you say it would to annoy me. No, because it's it works by definition because it's the nature of infinity. It doesn't matter. If it, it, infinite means if they did everything at random, just random, 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 forever, forever and ever and ever, eventually they type everything. They it, 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 it wouldn't. It wouldn't. They check. What do you mean it wouldn't? It wouldn't. There'd always be mistakes. There would be mistakes. They'd do the complete works of Shakespeare an infinite amount of times. Yeah, but do you mean they'd actually do it from start to finish? Or a chapter, they might get a chapter done, you go, right, well done. It's like, shut up, no! They know that. No! There's no, there's no feedback to it, it's just that everything being done, they will eventually do everything every time. They'll, they'll, they'll get it wrong an infinite amount of times, they'll get every letter wrong an infinite amount of times. It's the same monkey. Doesn't matter whether it's an infinite amount of monkeys. Why does the other one know what the first one does? It d doesn't matter. They've chosen monkeys, not because they're thinking about it, to take thought out of it, they want it to be random. Yeah, but when they hand over, when they shift over, over, what do you mean they shift? The monkey, the monkey's done, done, I, whatever shift pattern they're on. They're not on a shift pattern. Infin infinity. You work from now forever. That's one monkey. What difference does it make if it's one monkey for an infinite amount of time or an infinite amount of monkeys? Because you can believe it if it was if it was one monkey doing it. Because he's going to get better, isn't he, as time goes on? It's nothing to do with their consciousness. It's nothing to do with them thinking about it. What do you mean he'd get better? He'd get better if he's doing it on his own. If it's just the one monkey, he knows what he's done. It's nothing to do with knowing what you've done. It's just a random process to show the nature of infinity. With no errors. It may not it... happen. Seriously, people, I think you're winding me up on that one. It wouldn't happen. And it hasn't happened. Because we haven't had an infinite amount of monkeys. We've had we? years though, haven't we? There hasn't been one publication for monkey. <laughs> we've been around. We've been around longer than us. That's what I'm saying. We've been around longer than us. <laughs> You're laughing, but I think you know. I think you know. It's doesn't happen. What do you think of the old people? Do you think of their old issues? What do you mean? What do you think about you know? But isn't it a shame that people work their life and then just get a little state pension that? Oh, they do alright for themselves, don't they, old yeah. people? What do they do? Just, just potter about, don't they? Just potter. Yeah. They don't need much money. Yeah. As you get older. What do they spend it on doing? Ornaments. Which <laughs> are fading out, aren't they? Yeah. They won't be able to have ornaments in a few years' time. No one buys ornaments now. So there's older people, aren't they? Yeah. Just as you get older, I mean, things are changing all the time. It's like I've said to you about old people don't have Twixes, they don't eat Twix, but they like ornaments. So that generation, you know what I mean, things change. What do you mean old people don't like Twix? You never see an old man having a Twix. You don't, you never see one eating one. Well, how would you know? Because you see them, don't you, sat about having Werther's or whatever, but you never see them sat there tucking into a Twix. I've never thought about it. Well, that's because you haven't seen one, so think about it. If you saw, if you saw a fellow eating one, you'd go, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Brilliant. Start with capital punishment. Do you believe in the death penalty? Yeah, if, uh, if they know for certain that. Well, how do you know for certain? If they say I did it. Well, people have confessed before and been lying, haven't they, to get attention or something? Why would you? Why would you lie? I mean, you might be protecting someone else. Uh, the love of a of a, a parent for their child who's committed a terrible crime might say I did it. There's loads of reasons. How, how can you kill someone? How can you make that a definitive ending when you can never know? Because that person wouldn't do it again because then they'd know, wouldn't they? What? Say if I did a murder. Yeah. You said, I'll take the rap for it. Yeah. Right? You go and get hung. Yeah. I can't do a murder again because they'll go, so it wasn't him. Well, there's loads of reasons, no, there's loads of reasons people. Uh, uh, if you're mental, if you're a serial killer, you don't stop because you think you might get caught. So what are you asking me? I was asking you, do you believe in the death penalty? No. Well, what, what do you want me to say? I don't know what the right answer is. 
Well, it's what you think. We're having a discussion. I said, I said, if, if they've done it and that, yeah, do them in, yeah. Could you pull the rope? Could you release the guillotine? Why am I getting involved in it? Well, if you believe in it, sure you, surely if you believe in it, you should be able to stand by it. Well, what, which one is it? Which one have I got to do? What, what button am I pressing? Does it matter? Well, yeah, it's different, isn't it? Well, you wouldn't hang someone, but you... So what do you do when you hang someone? You kick the stool away? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, it probably is, I don't know, it's probably more sophisticated now. It used to be a trap door, didn't it? So you just go like that. It's an easy gig. That's a job. That's someone's job. Okay then, okay, we're not getting anywhere in. If you had to be killed, right, would you rather be hung, beheaded, burnt at the stake, or lethal injection? Probably, uh, probably injection. Definitely. He said, so you know, you just go to sleep. What if I tell you, everything else is the same, but with a lethal injection, as he injects you, he just slips his finger up your ass for a laugh. Why would that happen? Is that in small print? I've been telling <laughs> that before. <laughs> I'm just saying, would it make a difference if you were going to die anyway? So, it, you just lay down like that, like, he just injects you and he goes, okay, just not, he's just... Why is he doing that? What? Why is he doing that? Just for a laugh, why not? For a laugh? Well, yeah, if he's killing you, if you're worthless to society, why doesn't he have, you might as well put his finger up your ass. What's it up to you? What's to you? It doesn't make any difference to you, is it? You're going to die in a minute. And do I know he's going to do this? Yeah, it's a way I'm, not, I'm not happy. So what is it then? Lethal injection with the finger up the ass. Hang in. I'm not happy with the finger up the arse. <laughs> no, you're not! But you're not, surely you're not happy being put to death. I'll just say, what, what, hang on a minute, what, what's, what, why are you putting gloves on? Why are you getting that finger out to get my arse? He maybe doesn't put gloves on. Why does he put gloves on? Well, I'm, I'm not happy with that. But it's nothing to do with you, Carl. Well, what do you have? I'd have a injection without the finger up my arse. That's not your choice, though. You've done an awful crime. I'm not having a finger up the arse. Hang me, then. <laughs> well, you'd rather be hung then lead injection is just, just popping the finger up your ass. I don't want that. So okay, um, uh, me other have your head cut off? You know about the, uh, are you, are you still alive for about 30 seconds? I see you had your head cut off. Wouldn't have thought so. You see this, again, you know, you believe the monkey's talking away. Well, it's nerve reactions, isn't it? You're not alive as such. Well, they got him to walk, um, years ago, whenever they did the last sort of head chopped off thing. Yeah. How long ago was that? I don't know. A few years ago, right? Yeah. And um, they said to him, right, you're going to die in that. You've come yeah. to terms with it. Yeah. yeah. Have a bit of fun, right? Um, Think about the arse? No, no, no. Going to do a white line on the pavement. Bollocks. How could they tell him that that's what they were going to do? So he was meant to what? Remember this and walk the white line without a fucking head? Well, that, this is what they did. Well, no. He painted a white line, yeah, right? Yeah. He said to him, right, I'm going to cut your head off. Yeah. There's the line. Have a look now, right? So you know where it is. Carl, think what you're saying. How is he going to remember it without a head? No, you remember. You, you remember. Well, where's the memory? Where's the memory in his legs? Where do you think you store memory in your fucking arms? Yeah, but if you do it quick enough, if it's like go and and you no, he's walking there head. and he's, he's walking. And he walked. He'd no, 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 it's bollocks. It's he, bollocks. Did, he did 35 steps. Bollocks. It's not it bollocks, is. though. Because it's how can bollocks. the body remember what his head was told a few seconds ago? His head's now in a basket. Yeah. The body doesn't go, what was I meant to, meant to Sorry, what was I meant to do? I know, I was meant to walk along. Well, he they did it. It was a test. Well, no, it wouldn't happen. You're talking shit again. Okay. Believe in absolute yeah. bollocks. So you with the monkeys and the Shakespeare. <laughs> That's what annoys me. It's not about monkeys, is it? It's about random. Yeah. So you'd have lethal injection? Lethal injection, yeah. I think that is best. Well, thanks very much, Carl Pilkington. Right. Two. We did a little bonus feature for my politics DVD, um, where we where we talked about um, politics, obviously, and that sort of introduced you to the world that. That was put on um, YouTube and it's had like a million hits. So I think, you know, it's time we did that again. But um, around science, a, a, a subject that, if possible, you know less about than you did about politics.
in a way. I reckon I do know more about science. What is science? Uh, it's in everything, isn't it? You can't avoid science. It's interesting because people who believe in God say that about God. He's in everything. No, no, but this is, this is like proper. This is, you know, if people want to believe in God, that's all right. But science is, without science, you wouldn't have any of this. Well, it's almost the antithesis, isn't it? That if you believe in the magic of, you know, God and all his impossibilities and theological and, uh, you know, that's science looks at hard empirical facts. See, all that went right off my head. I'm into science. I'm into the weird science. Um, you know, I like the fun of it. There's a lot of fun in science. Let's start at the beginning. The Big Bang. Okay, here, what, what do you think of this? An atom, right, is mostly nothing. One analogy is it's like a fist in the Albert Hall. So an atom, the size of the Albert Hall, the matter part of it, okay, the nucleus would be a fist. The rest is space, okay? That's one thing. With a fly buzzing around it as the electron, just a, a, yeah, a charge. Now, when we look at it on that scale, it's easy to understand that all matter that exists, everything in this universe was once in the space many, many times smaller than an atom. Yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. That doesn't, no one, most people watching this are going, I don't get that, my head hurts, what else is on? Everything in the universe could be crammed into the, the tiniest thing imaginable. And that was sitting there in the beginning of time. Right? 15 billion years ago. Right? And then it expanded into a universe in a few minutes. What was the minutes then? No. So we don't know then. We don't know how long it took. Not that it matters, I'm not bothered. It's here now. And that's what I'm saying to you. It's all amazing that, the Big Bang thing. I've said to you, was it a Big Bang? Or was it just because there was nothing else there to drown out the noise? At the end of the day, it's that whole thing, isn't it? The noise. Was there even a noise if no one's there to hear it? Don't be worrying about all that stuff. Leave it to Stephen Hawking to do it. Of course he can sit there and think about it. He's got nothing else to do. Let him get online. Oh, th it's great to think. I like thinking. But my world's too busy. I've always got to be doing other things. He sat there just thinking. I'd be the same if I was in his shoes. Exactly the same thinking. But he's, he's, he's done that much thinking. He's thinking about things now he doesn't need to think about. Pack it in, Steve. Have a rest. <laughs> Play Pac-Man. Do, do whatever. Just do something else. Stop worrying about the Big Bang. <clears throat> he's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. We don't need to know the answer. He's wasting his life thinking about something that doesn't matter. Good. It, it doesn't matter, does it? In your life of things that matter, where would you put the Big Bang? No, but then, but then no, where do you draw the line? We're not here for long enough. Well, we're not here for long enough. But then enough. nothing matters then, does it? So yeah, we, it does, yeah. What, what does? Matter. What matters? Well, keeping people happy. Okay. You know, uh, looking after people. So, so keeping them happy could be giving them life-saving drugs or feeding a, um, a starving world or letting someone become mobile that was otherwise yeah. immobile. And that's, that's fine. But you're talking about space. When did it start? Where does it end? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. You know, it goes on and on and on and on. We know that. Atoms, they're not getting in the way. Stop worrying about them. I read something about some scientists trying to smash one up. What for? <laughs> they're not in the way. If they were big and I kept bumping into them, I'd smash them up. Break them down. Gravel. Make gravel out of them. <laughs> Mike, I'm so tiny that they're only gravel. No, but what, what I'm saying is it's not an issue. And right. there's loads of problems in the world. There is loads of problems. You may mention them all, the starvation, all that. And someone's faffing about with an atom. Mm. That isn't going to sort anything out.
Some people say mathematics is the tool of science. You need maths to do anything in science. Yeah, of precision. I believe, that, I believe that. You do. I like doing DIY. I told you there's a lot of maths involved. Accuracy. Right. That's fine. Okay. Just taking it slightly even more accurate than than DIY. Um, micro surgery. Um, putting a man on the moon. The figures had to be pointless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, you see, if we didn't have the numbers, that wouldn't have happened. But all we've done is create something else we didn't need because of something else we've got. We didn't have to put man on the moon. What was he doing? What did he do? Nothing. Has he been back? No, he hasn't. He didn't enjoy it. No one, no one else has gone up there. The only reason, the thing that I've thought of recently when I thought that would be good to go into space again is to get rid of rubbish. That's what I'd do. They're always going on about landfill and everything. It's not good. We can't get rid of all this. Shoot it up there. Stick it into space. It's mm. expanding. There's loads of space. Mm. Stick all the shit up there. Don't be sending a man up. I, I, I heard that one of them astronauts knocking a golf ball about on the moon. Leave your golf clubs at home and take some shit up with you and tip it. <laughs> yeah, but do you know how much fuel is needed to get a kilogram of something up out of the Earth's atmosphere and oh, into space? Me. He had a golf club with him. A I golf know. ball. Okay, but how much, how much rubbish do you think we can really get rid of? As much as you want. But how much fuel does it take? I mean, there's, it's a matter of economics as well. Think of the fuel that... Uh, the fuel that would take a bin bag full up into space would far outweigh that bin bag being on Earth. But they keep going into space now. They're not going to the moon. They knock around space messing with satellites. Right. Less astronauts, a couple of bin bags. Chuck some shit up there. And what's good with it is it won't break up. It'll just keep circling. And up there then, space isn't space anymore. It'll be like a museum. Because there'll be old stuff from years ago. At the moment, we're not, we, we don't save anything, do we? It's all about recycling. Mm. Everything's destroyed. There's no evidence of the past. Mm. Go into space, it'll be like Antiques Roadshow of shit from the years gone by. Right. I'd like to see this episode. That's mental, Carl. It's not mental. It is mental. How would you get the rubbish up there? In the rocket. Yeah, but you don't know anything. Do you know how much there. fuel... It takes to but burn... But they're going up anyway. I'm just saying, at least if they're going up there, do something. Do something different. It's space. There's nothing in space. Well, let's put something there. That's what we do as humans. We don't like plain space. We fill it. That's what we do. So just chuck some shit into space. That's all I'm saying. If you're up there, get rid of a few bin bags. Brilliant. That's space. There's nothing... Don't you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing. Yeah, but it's mental. It's 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 everything's wrong with it. It's a ter once again a terrible flawed theory. Time machines. They're funny. That's science. Well, we're sort of going into the future, aren't we? All the time, by well, every definition. Every day, every day we are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm talking about people want to do big leaps, don't they? Yeah. I met a scientist once, you know, um, that old fellow we met, proper scientist. He said he'd love to get in a time machine. Patrick Moore? No, um, Wolf. Heinz Wolf. All right. I met him, he said, I'd love a time machine. Where would he go, back or Yeah, forward? back. He said yeah. he wanted to go back, because he asked me, he said, where do you want to go? And I said, oh, uh, I think I picked a holiday that I had. So you went back five or six years? Because I knew exactly what I'd be going back to. I enjoyed that week. I'd be going back. I wouldn't have to pay for that holiday. I've already paid for it. It's not like I'm turning up and someone's going, get out, you shouldn't be here. I was there. So you're going back because you reckon you'll save 400 quid? Well, it's 250. It was a bargain. In Mallorca, a villa, swimming pool, three bedrooms. That's what you'd use a time machine for? I'm just saying, why do people always have to jump so far So back? hold on then, let me get this straight. Are you going back and it's you now and you've had that five years and you're loving it, oh, I remember doing this, or are you going back and just reliving it like a memory and no one knows the difference and nor do you? It's like you're just doing it and then you have to... No, no, I, everybody there doesn't know I've gone back in time. Right. But so you've come me. from the future then? Yeah, but they don't know that. No, I know, but you're in your body then, you look like you did then, but actually it's Carl five years on. Yeah, but I'm having the same holiday and I'm going to enjoy it more. So you're not coming back with going like, oh, Rita, go and get that checked out. No. And, no? Just have a holiday. 
But the weird thing is, this professor bloke, he wanted to go back. He said he wanted to go back when, like, cavemen were knocking about to see how they sort of mooched about and how they survived. See, that to me is more interesting than going back on a holiday I've already had. I'll be honest. You wouldn't go back to being a caveman. You'd eat it. You'd be going, oh, God, send me back. And they go, no, no. You've got to stay here for a bit. It's an expensive machine. 10,000 years. (laughs) Yeah. I don't understand that. I wouldn't want to go forward either. So when you went back, so, what, so suppose you went back to caveman times, right? You you are you, right? You'd fit in fine. Well, I'd be brilliant. Yeah. I'd be the king. Maybe. No, I would. Right, what would you do then? No, How would you... Like you said, they'd be they come, they go, they go, they go. Yeah. Uh, uh. Right. It's slightly different, isn't it? No, it's not. It's exactly the same. We haven't changed bodily. I've got a pair of pants on. Right. So you go back naked, so you'd fit in? No. Well, because I'd look all pale and... No, no, no. You wouldn't go back naked. They'd go, they would take your pants off. The first thing they'd do, if you went there with pants, they would rip your pants off. No, they wouldn't. They would. They you wouldn't. can't go back with pants on. You've got to go back naked. It's summer. They're walking around naked. Why would you go with pants on? Before you get in the time machine, you'd have to take your pants off. No, because I want to come across like I'm something from the future. Okay. So I walk in. They're going, whoa. What are they doing? What do they say? They just can't believe it. They're going, what's going on? What do you say? I say, I'm just visiting. What are you wearing then? What are you wearing? This. I've gone like this. Okay. They would definitely want to see... No, they wouldn't. They would. to they wouldn't, because they're sick of seeing it. To them, it's like being on a nudist beach. They're no longer looking at cock and bollocks and tits and arse. They're seeing it every day. To them, it isn't weird. To me, I'll probably be looking at them. Go put some pants on. I don't understand why they couldn't do that, really. They, I think they did the wheel before the pants. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, I think they did. I think they did. I think they did. Biology. The life sciences. Isn't it amazing that we're here? That anything is here? That we're having a chat now in front of these cameras for a DVD extra? And we started off as a single cell blob, a little thing that had the right temperature in the right compound, the right minerals, ultraviolet. A little thing happened. This little nucleus, it was just a, just a cell, okay? But I don't like thinking about that. And then it divided, then it... Yeah. Got a skin, and then... Yeah. I don't want to know, you know, when people get in touch from Friends Reunited, I go, that was 20 years ago, I don't want to know. Right. So I certainly don't want to know about 30 million years ago. Okay. I want my little time zone that I'm right. born, I live, and I die in. Okay. That's all I can worry about. It doesn't fascinate know. you at all. It doesn't fascinate it you at amazing, all. It is amazing, but it hurts your head, doesn't it? I don't the, the, like the, it. I don't just like by it. chance, something happened, uh, a genetic mutation, and then that, and that, and then that was chosen by nature. It worked. It survived. Okay? But certain things work, and they're not that impressive, like slugs. You always say, well, it's evolved. It hasn't evolved. Okay. We share about 70% of our genetic material with a slug. What, 70%? Well... What, what 70% has that got, that I've got? It's got 70%. I've coughed up stuff that looks like a slug. If that's a 70% you're talking about, but there's nothing else, nothing in a slug. There is. Nothing. You share, you share DNA with an onion. I've heard that. That's the roundness of the head, probably. I'm telling you that the slug has about 70% of the same genetic material as the human species. We're that close. We're that close. All the hard work, all the hard work was done then in terms of, like, getting it right. A slug got it right. A slug is as evolved as us. Perfect. It's not perfect. Why? Okay. Definitely not perfect. Why? Why isn't it perfect? It's just not great. I've, I've, I've had to deal with slugs a lot when they were like blocking up my shower. Right. 
There's a gang of them in the tube. How can they be uh, as evolved as me? What are they doing? Uh, Sat there. Uh, just all mush, mushified. <laughs> mushified! Right, talk know. me through it. What happened? Just was having a shower and the shower basin filled up. Right. Like, What's going on here? Yeah. So I got a plunger. Right. So bits of black stuff. I mean, what is this? I had to t unscrew the, the, the plug hole bit. Couldn't quite get down there. Yeah. To take the tiles off the side of the shower thing. Right. Got in there, unscrewed it all, got the pipe. Just slugs all in there. All sat in there, blocking it up. Don't right. know how they got in there. But that's what I'm saying to you. They don't know what they're doing. What they're doing, knocking about in there. <laughs> get out! <laughs> <laughs> now, what are they doing? I don't know to this day what they do. I watch insects, they, you know I like insects. They I'm survive. That's what they do. They're chosen by nature. Yeah, but they don't nature. know. There's, there's another one. There's loads of insects knocking about the house. There's a spider in the outside shed. It's not an insect, nor is a slug. A slug is a mollusk, a spider's an arachnid. All right. Okay. The spider's in the cupboard outside. Right. I'm not joking. It's been there now for about two years. Right. Could be three. Okay. Same one. It's quite big. Right. Just sits there in the corner. Right. I go in, I smash its web up. Why? Because I don't want it there. Right, fine. I don't want to kill a spider. Right. But I'm sort of saying, I'm wrecking your house. If you move, there's no problem, move. I go back, it's built its web again. Just right. sat there like that. Doing nothing. <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> well, it's not doing nothing, is it? Well, it's building its house. Every it's time hunting. I wreck it. It's hunting. It's not even doing that. Well, it is. That's, what it ha that's how it does it. It's made, a, it's made a web and things fly into it. Then it wraps them up, sucks the juice out. Right. But for what? To then sit in this shed? It's what not are you doing? Existence. What Why doesn't it go? But you're eating. You're staying in your flat. You want to go back to Mallorca five years ago. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, well, it depends. I've been. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in another billion years? You'll be the slug. The human race could be the slugs. There could be this amazing being that, that, that evolved from us going, what are they doing? People go, well, you know, 70% of their genetic material. You don't know how it's going to go. You stood on the shoulder of giants. You stood on a few slugs, you told me, in your flat. But we share our ancestry with those slugs. We are related to slugs. I have never watched Who Do You Think You Are? And they've gone, they've gone to your family tree. Do you know uh, Terry the Slug? He's a great uncle of yours. We don't need to know where we've come from. And nobody would want to hear that either on that programme. You would not want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, but you're... There's nothing to do with us. <sighs> oh. It's happened. It's all, all an accident. But it's a matter of degrees. Your brother. Right. Okay. Very close to you. Your cousin. I haven't seen him for about 12 years. <laughs> okay, genetically speaking. Couldn't get closer. Okay, it's the closest you can be, a brother, a son, a mother, to accept, you know, accept a clone, an identical twin, okay? So, cousin, a bit less, great cousin, da -da -da. bloke around the world, da -da -da. chimp, marmot, mouse, bird. I don't know what you're doing now, you're just saying words at me. What's a marmot? <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you're related to him. You're related to him. With all our evolution, now we can sit around doing Sudoku and inflaming our mind and inventing art and stuff. Um, so I want to. I want to use to use you know scientific method. Let's use a bit of logic. Okay. I'll give you a couple of conundrums because I want to see how, how you've evolved, okay? Um, there's two children sitting on a bench. Yeah. Okay? Okay? Ready? Yeah. Okay. There's a boy and a girl. Okay? They're the, they're the kids on the bench. Yeah. There's a boy and a girl sat on a bench. Yeah. The blonde-haired child yeah. says, I'm a girl. Right. The brown-haired child says, I'm a boy. At least one of the children are lying. 
which one's the boy and which one's the girl. But what else can I see there? Can you I tell by the way they look or am I blind? No, no you can't see. I'm blind. Yeah, you can't see. I'm just, I'm telling you. There's still the information you need. And they actually sound, I can tell by voice. No, or... no, no, you can't. No, 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 you can't. I'm telling you, okay? So hang on. Say, Two say children sitting your... on the bench, right? You've come to me, I haven't seen these. No, no. I have not heard them. You've come no. to me and yeah. said, I've just been in the park. Yeah, yeah. Say again, I've just been in the park yeah. and I've seen yeah. a lad and a girl, one had brown hair, one had blonde hair. Yeah. The, the, the blonde haired child said, I'm a girl. Yeah. The brown haired child said, I'm a boy. At least one of them is lying. Which one's the girl and which one's the boy? I don't know. Well, think. I don't want to. Why don't you want to? I don't want to work it out. It's a very easy one. Just think through the scenarios in your head. I'm a girl. Who said that? The brown haired one. I'm a no, girl. the blonde haired one said I'm a girl. One of them is lying. Yeah, at least one of them is lying. The lad. So just the, just the boy is lying. Oh, both of them are. Well, they've got to be both lying, haven't they? Why? Because there's a boy and a girl there. One of them saying they're a girl, one saying they're a boy. Yeah, so if one of them's lying... But they're both lying. They have to be both lying. So the blonde-haired kid's a boy. Right. See? But what, 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 are we, what are you doing with that? Because it trains the mind to think logically, to think through it. That's, that's imposing a scientific method.